Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. How do I use a data table and you import arrays and structures, or how do you work with arrays and structures in a data table when you're using an external file format? So to make this really simple, there are ways of handling arrays and structures, arrays and JSON types inside of external files, CSV and JSON files. That is a standard. It basically uses the parentheses. And you can use that in order to get data into and out of a data table in Unreal Engine. If I was to open up a spreadsheet and we did something like this, parentheses 9, 9, 9, close parentheses. This is going to give us, if we import it, a array of integers, three integers with a value 9, 9, and 9. That's the way that arrays and structures work inside of a CSV file. So if you wish to import it and use an array, that's what you could do. Something like a string would be string 1, comma, string 2, etc. You'd have parentheses defining the array boundaries, the item inside separated by commas for each item. So if we had a third one in here, for example, we would just do comma and properly try to spell that. There we go, comma, string three, and close it out. Now that's pretty nice and easy when it's a basic, but let's say it's something like a structure where you have a, let's say it's a location which actually contains three floats, or even a transform which contains three structures, each containing unique data. Then things can get a little complicated to figure out. But by using export, we can easily make that work. So let's go and look at the complete process. Here's a file, and here's my test data table. It's pretty simple. We've got a name, an age, and a title. But let's say we want to make a list of friends. Well, let's go ahead and edit our original structure. That's my weapon table, so that's not the right one. And let's add a new array of strings. So this is going to be our friends list. And our friend list is going to be strings, and it's going to be of type array. So now we have an array of friends. Now, if we were to take our test data table and open it up, you now see we have our friends list. And if we export this out, well, we're not really going to see much. We don't have any test data to play with. So I'd recommend populating it with at least something. So we're going to go in here, and we're going to add two, I want to add three friends. We have Larry, Mo, and we have Curly. So I have three friends. Now I close this out. I'm going to want to export this out both as a CSV and as a JSON file. So we can look at both of them. And then we're going to go and look at them. So let's go ahead and find the files right here. And let's look at the JSON. Now the JSON file treats this as an array, just like you would have an array inside JSON. So we have our friends list. This is the array declarator and then the items in the array. Not a problem. If you're using JSON, it's pretty simple. However, if you're using CSV, well, then things might seem a little weird. The nice thing is because we have this as a CSV file, we could easily start off with our data table, declare a data table like we've done, put in some test data, and then pull it into our spreadsheet program to go from there. So if I go into my actual spreadsheet program, and I'm going to go and import that file, so let me import that file. Let me find where I put it. It's right here. And we're going to upload it. Then it'll import it. I'm going to create a spreadsheet. It's comma separated. It'll bring it in. And now we have this as our data. And you'll see we have all the information like we'd expect in our CSV. Our row name, our person name, our age, our title. And then now our friends list, which is an array of strings. And if you see, it is laid out like I mentioned. Now that we have this set up like this and we can have a connection set up, let's go ahead and just export this back out just for safety's sake. So I export it back out. I'm going to go ahead and open up that file in the original place. So let me grab it out of my downloads. And we'll go ahead and what did we call that? It looks like it's, I actually don't know what that was called. Hmm. Probably should have paid attention when I was exporting that, huh? Yeah, let's try exporting that out again because I didn't see what it was called as. Uh, test, test CSV, okay. So that's what it was, which I apparently lost. Wow, huh, okay. Let's try this again, sorry about this. 
I guess I need to figure out where I open. Oh, let's just okay. We'll do save as then. We'll make it even easier. I don't know why it's not saving out appropriately, but we'll save in the correct directory this time. Weird. So we'll save it over the other CSV file, the one that we imported the data from. This really doesn't do much. It basically pulls it out. We can edit it or get it into our format for using, and then puts it back into a format where we can pull it into the engine. Now, in this case, we're going to go ahead and delete the original because I've already assigned something to it. If we hadn't assigned something to it, we could just re-import and assign something new. So we'll delete that. We're going to re-import our CSV file. So I'll drop it in here. It'll ask us what it is. It's a test structure data table, and we'll open it up. And you notice we have it back just like before. But now we have a link. Now we have a link to that CSV file, and we can start editing it. And the nice part is not only can we edit it in here, so we have, let's go with Bob, and we'll just do a single array with Bob. We're going to export this out again. Well, this time we'll save as and remember doing it properly. We've got our link set up, so we should be able to re-import that data table. So we'll re-import it. And we should have one friend now, Bob. And you'll see it's one friend. Now let's say you're going to do something more complicated. This is why I set up the link in the first place. Now we're going to add in a much more complicated item. We're going to add in a structure. And that would probably help if I opened up the test one. There we go. So let's add in an array of locations. Well, actually, we're going to add an array of transforms. So this is where your friends were last at. So we're going to set up friends transforms. So this is going to be an array of transforms, and it's going to be wherever your friends were last at. We'll go ahead and open this up. We'll go ahead and open up our data table, and you notice we now have our friends transforms. Nothing's in it yet, but again, I'd recommend putting at least something in there. So we're going to put two in here. We're going to say this friend was at this location. We're just going to put in some random stuff. And this friend was at this location, and that's his rotation. Okay. Close it out. We now have this data, as you can see in here. And rather than guessing at this way this is set up, if you notice there's a, the parentheses, and then we have this character that I don't know the name of, and then we have some names and quotations, and we have colons, and we have this whole entire thing we'd have to copy out. We don't have to. Let's just go ahead and export those back out. We'll pull them back out as CSV and JSON files, and we can look at them. So here's our JSON file. And you'll notice, like we expect, because transform is actually an array which contains data in it, we have transform array. So we have an array of transforms. And then the transforms themselves are made up of individual items. We have x, y, z, and w for the rotation. We have x, y, z for translation, x, y, z for scale. So our JSON looks like we'd expect it. And we can easily see and edit it in here. And our CSV file, let's go ahead and update it. So we're going to have to re-import because I've downloaded it and I've changed it. So we're going to re-import that file. So let me upload that one again. And we'll go and re-import. We're going to replace the current spreadsheet just so I can do it. Re-import. And it should have re-imported. I may have, let's see. No, okay. So let's probably re-import and let's not... I wonder if it re-imported the wrong one. Let's find out. Let's do this again. Re import, upload, select a file. This is the one we just created. We'll go and create a new spreadsheet just to be safe this time. Re-import. And there we go. That's what we're looking for. And now you can see we have our array of strings and we have our array of transforms. And you can see we have this giant string which contains all of our data. But now that we have it in here, now we can easily edit, update, bring data in from something else, modify whatever we want, because we have the format. We didn't have to guess. This is the format that Unreal Engine uses for a transform array. And this is the format that we are now using for that same transform array. Simple as that, not too difficult, really simple. A couple things to note while we are in here is I haven't had an issue with anything normal in terms of structures and values and things like that for exporting. Anything that's not, anything that's like an object and such, you'll probably have an issue with because it's not a hard reference, but that's a normal issue with data tables. If you have experience in JSON, I personally recommend using JSON for your imports and outputs because it makes it a cleaner format. I did mention this in the other file for working with CSVs, but if you look at the data table itself, um, 
uh, where's where is it hidden at? I think it's under export. Hold on a second. Uh, oh, here we go. Open source data. If you look at open source data, you can find that it says it'll use Excel files, Excel M files, which are the newer Excel files, CSV files, and JSON. You are not limited to only opening CSV files. CSV is just generally a nice, easy, interchangeable format that most spreadsheet programs can use, but you are free to use JSON files. We can, if we wanted to, grab my JSON file here. This is my JSON file, drop it in, and you'll notice it re-imported data test data table from test CSV. Now it said that because of the fact it's sent to re-import, we'll delete that. We'll do this again so I can prove myself not lying. Data table, structure, hit okay, and you'll notice it's linked up as a JSON file. We have all the data like we expect. So that's it. That's going to wrap up our video for working with arrays and structures and importing them. They will work perfectly fine. I would recommend creating your template structure, getting your template structure set up. Use a blank data table on that. Throw in some test data just so you can get a valid CSV or JSON file working. Then export it out, set that up, bring it back in so that way you now have your connected workflow and then you can easily edit arrays, structures, and things like that without any problem.